Good morning and welcome to Daily Morning Prayer. This is for Wednesday, March 17th. We're continuing out of Common Prayer, a liturgy for ordinary radicals. <clears throat> and today we commemorate Patrick of Ireland. And he was born 389 and died 461. At the age of 16, Patrick was kidnapped from his home by Irish marauders and taken to Ireland, where he was sold as a slave to a chieftain and forced to herd livestock. After six years of slavery, Patrick escaped to his native Britain. Because he believed that his captivity and deliverance were ordained by God, Patrick devoted his life to ministry. While studying for the priesthood, he experienced recurring dreams in which he heard voices say, O holy youth, come back to Erin and walk once more among us. He convinced his superiors to let him return to Ireland in 432, not to seek revenge for injustice, but to seek reconciliation and to spread his faith. Over the next 30 years, Patrick established churches and monastic communities across Ireland. When he was not engaged in the work of spreading the Christian faith, Patrick spent his time praying in his favorite places of solitude and retreat. O oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. And our song for this morning is Be Thou My Vision. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence my light. I arise, I arise today, in the spirit of the Trinity. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 89, verses 34 through 37. I will not break my covenant, nor change what has gone out from my lips. Once for all I have sworn by my holiness. I will not lie to David. His line shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall stand fast forevermore like the moon, the abiding witness in the sky. I arise, I arise today, in the spirit of the Trinity. Our Old Testament reading continues out of Exodus chapter 3, verses 16 through chapter 4, verse 12. Now go, God said, gather the elders of the Israelites and tell them, I am the God of your ancestors appeared to me, the God of Sarah and Abraham, the God of Rebekah and Isaac, the God of Leah and Rachel and Jacob, and said, <coughs> I have heard you and I have seen the way you are being treated in Egypt. I tell you now that I will lead you out of the oppression in Egypt to the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Jeb Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites to a land flowing with milk and honey. They will hear your message, and together with the elders of Israel, you will go to the ruler of Egypt and say, The Lord, the God of e Hebrews, met with us. Permit us, therefore, to make a three days journey into the desert to offer sacrifice to the Lord. However, I know that the ruler of Egypt will not allow you to go except by the force of a mighty hand. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all the wonders I am going to work there. After that, the Pharaoh will set you free. And I will make the Egyptians look with favor on you so that when you leave, you will not go empty handed. Each of the women will borrow, will borrow objects of silver and gold from her neighbors and any people renting from them. And they will borrow clothes from them as well, which you will put on your daughters and sons. In this way, you will plunder Egypt. Moses asked, but what if they do not believe me or even listen to me? What if they say God has not appeared to you? Then Moses, God asked Moses, what do you have in your hand? My staff, Moses replied. God said, throw it on the ground. Moses threw it to the ground and it became a snake. Moses recoiled from it in horror. Then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand and grab it by the tail. Moses reached out his hand, grabbed the snake, and it became a staff in his hand once again. This is how they will trust that God, the God of their ancestors, the God of Sarah and Abraham, of Rebekah and Isaac and Leah and Rachel and Jacob has appeared to you. Then the Lord said, 
put your hand inside your tunic. Moses did as instructed, putting his hand inside the tunic. And when he pulled out the hand, it was snowy, white, with leprosy. God said, put your hand back into your tunic. Moses put it back into the tunic, and when he took it out again, it was restored like the rest of his skin. Then God said, if they disbelieve you and do not believe the message of the first sign, they might believe the second. But if they disbelieve both miraculous signs and don't even listen to your message, take some water from the Nile and pour it on the ground. It will turn into blood. Then Moses said to the Holy One, Please, my God, I am not good with words. I wasn't yesterday, nor the day before, nor am I now, even after you spoke to me. I speak slowly and with a wooden tongue. The Lord replied, Who taught people to speak in the first place? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who makes them see or be blind? Who, if not I, the Lord? Now go, I myself will be with you when you speak. I will teach you what to say. Our New Testament reading continues from Mark chapter 6, verses 47 through 56. When evening came, the boat was far out on the lake, and Jesus was alone on the land. He saw that the disciples were worn out with rowing, because the wind was against them. About three in the morning, Jesus went out to them, walking on the water. He was about to pass them by when they saw him, and thinking it was a ghost, cried out, for they had all seen him and were terrified. Jesus hastened to reassure them, Calm yourselves, it's me. Don't be afraid. Jesus got into the boat with them, and the wind died down. They were completely amazed by what had happened, for they hadn't understood about the loaves. Their minds were closed. After crossing the lake, Jesus and the disciples came ashore at Gennesaret and tied up their boat there. No sooner had they stepped out of the boat than people recognized Jesus. The crowd started hurrying about the countryside and brought the sick on stretchers wherever Jesus went. Wherever he appeared, in villages and towns or in the countryside, they laid down the sick in the open places, begging him to let them touch just the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched Jesus got well. <clears throat> I arise, I arise today in the spirit of the Trinity. This prayer is attributed to Patrick. Christ be with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in every eye that sees me, Christ in every ear that hears me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, if only we made ourselves as open and available as your saints of old, who knows what you might do through us. Speak to us in visions and dreams, make your will known to us, and be patient with us. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors.